And even with the test, you know, for people out there that are like, oh, it's a little bit expensive. Like, how much is your life worth, man? You wouldn't think twice about spending, you know, a few hundred dollars on a fancy dinner and getting shit-faced drunk and, and doing things that are completely counterproductive to your health. But the idea of spending a little bit of money to find out where you stand and in, in, in measure, like, probably the most important indicator of your longevity, your blood work, is insane to me. You've done two inside trackers. You've done yep. two ultimates with us. You've done a DNA test. Mm -hmm. um, I guess first question might be, what was what was interesting to you? Like, what was a surprise, good or bad? The ApoB elevated ApoB was incredibly, a oh, shocking, shockingly negative. I was just devastated. I mean, honestly, I was. I had a few days where I was like, I'm definitely gonna die of a heart attack. This sucks. And I don't want to die of a heart attack. Um, it caused me real anxiety, like no bullshit. It's just, I was just frustrated. And my wife was like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, I'm so pissed. Look at everything I'm doing. And I've got this stupid ass cholesterol. And then eventually through talking to like Michelle and some other people over at um, Inside Track, I was just like, and then doing my own research too, talking to people like Andrew Huberman and David Sinclair and, just kind of come into terms or come into grips with um, the fact that some of this stuff is genetic and it, you can't really control it. But I was like, all right, but what am I going to do for um, what kind of steps or protocols am I going to put in place? Actually, I keep I keep missing Simon Hill, but I've spoken to Simon a while and he has some some very strong convictions and views on this on this topic. So I'm going to eventually link with Simon and um kind of put some protocols in place to try to lower yeah. it. There's a part of me that's like, all right, I know I've got to fix this, but it's like someone who's out of shape losing weight. You're like, I'm going to start this. I just don't know when. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I do I do really want to um, start to think about it. And I know you mentioned um, statins as a possible um, cholesterol lower. And prior to kind of hearing your thoughts about it, I was very anti-pharmaceuticals. I was like anti-intervention uh, in terms of drugs. Um, but if it, if it will help me, uh, <laughs> live a little longer, I guess I'm down to try whatever. I mean, I think you're in a, you're in a, you're in a good position here and that like, A, you figured it out early, mm -hmm. right? And B, I think, especially for you, the genetics results are really interesting. So you were, you did pop up as having an elevated risk of having high ApoB which means that you're bumping up against a genetic wall, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And that doesn't mean that you can't get your ApoB levels down um, despite that at all, but it just means that it's going to be harder for you compared to somebody else who might have a different genetic risk for, yep. for ApoB. Um, and sometimes that information can be really helpful. So, you know, I, I would say that, I mean, we love Simon Hill mm -hmm. and... Totally like, and you know, we obviously there are different recommendations that are part of the Inside Tracker program too that are, you know, will give you guidance on actual clinical studies that have been shown that if you do this intervention, you know, actual human beings have been able to lower their <laughs> LDL cholesterol, their OBB levels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. You know, I think I think that your reaction to this and not wanting to jump to pharmaceuticals is like perfectly reasonable and lots of people feel that way and you always have that option after you exhaust the other ones. But I think, you know, if you exhaust all those other options and your ApoB is not moving to where you want it to be, then you know you have done everything possible and you really have rammed up against the genetics wall. And you can't, like it is statistically impossible to win the genetics lottery for everything, okay? Yep. So, you know. Um, that is the one thing that I love about the Inside Tracker and the app is that it actually provides you with real scientific data and suggestions for uh, intervention uh, or intervention protocols. And that's a huge plus because you get this... You know, if you get a traditional blood work, blood work back, unless you have a physician or a caretaker like walking you through what everything means, like you, you, it it's, might as well be written in a foreign language. The nice thing about Inside Tracker is that it breaks down everything 
you know, biomarker by biomarker and gives you, like I said, scientific data to, to, to support everything that it's guiding in terms of this is uh, elevated risk. Why? Here are all the reasons why. Here are some inter interventions you can try. And I love the idea of trying these things, then going back and retesting. Yeah. And even with the test, you know, for people out there that are like, oh, it's a little bit expensive. Like, how much is your life worth, man? You wouldn't think twice about spending, you know, a few hundred dollars on a fancy dinner and getting shit-faced drunk and, and doing things that are completely counterproductive to your health. But the idea of spending a little bit of money to find out where you stand and, and, and measure, like, probably the most important indicator of your longevity, your blood work is insane to me like what is your life worth like there is no price tag guarantee you if you find out that you had some kind of biomarker in, in, or early indicator for some cancer that you caught before you had to get like yeah. seriously involved cancer treatments because most of those things if you catch them early that's your best chance exactly 100%. so the question is like are you crazy what's your life worth man yeah. like you these are things that should be non-negotiables like getting blood work done regularly and making sure you're on top of it for guys getting like whatever the psa like mm -hmm. the prostate scan whatever psa stands for but basically those things are the earl the, the best early indicators for problems with prostate which like we were discussing earlier most men if you live long enough will have an issue with prostate whether yeah. cancer or otherwise yes which is scary it's totally scary. But it's not if you can catch that early, it's very it's very treatable. If you don't catch it early, you got a fucking problem now, yeah. and it could be real bad. Yes, a hundred percent. No, I, I yeah, I I actually treated myself this year to a cancer test. Oh, um, one of those full body scans. No, it wasn't. It, it's actually a blood test. Uh, I feel like we're like plugging them right now, but <laughs> we we get no kickbacks for this. Um, <laughs> The Galeri test through, um, oh, I forget which company makes it, but basically what it does is it looks at circulating tumor DNA yep. in your blood, and it will test for a variety of, like, monopoly of different cancers. Yeah. Um, and How much was the most, test? It was, I think it was somewhere between 750 and $900 oh. like my it's it's you know it's not it is not super cheap like I, know, I said but I, I but treated the, myself to it like the, that was it's a price though that everyone should be willing to pay especially yeah, I'm cancer paranoid so I wanted to know I want like I wanted to know and um, I don't know I don't know um well I don't, obviously I don't know how old you are but for me I'm 52 I'll be 53 in May but I would say when I turned 50, not exactly on the day, but in the last couple of years, I've become hyper aware of all that shit. Like, yeah. it's hard enough looking at yourself and see that you're getting older. The thought of letting something go like a potential cancer diagnosis that, that you could that you get or, caught earlier. Like, come on, yeah. man. If you talk to someone who's going through cancer treatment who didn't catch it early, and I'll guarantee you they would have given every friggin' penny yeah. they have to have avoided the, yes. the complications that they're having. And you only have to see someone go through that once to recognize that, like, don't be crazy. Totally. <laughs> There's a lot of things that we waste money on. That ain't a waste of money. No, I watched my mom die of pancreatic cancer, and it was just, it was the, just worst. the worst. It the was worst. The, it was the worst, right? And it's like she had, she had no shot because by the time pancreatic cancer was diagnosed, it's too late. And yep. actually, this particular test is you know fairly good at detecting pancreatic cancers yeah. a little bit earlier when you actually do have a shot you know otherwise you know i am not part of any type of screening protocol yep. within the hospitals like you do for colonoscopies That's right. right and like mammograms and there yeah. are psa right yeah. there are different ways for a handful of cancers but a lot of cancers you know there is no screening so i'm pretty psyched to see stuff like that yeah on the market now i hope that it gets covered by insurance i hope we can you know it's so crazy that broadly. an insurance company wouldn't want to pay for these tests it's it goes against all conventional wisdom if you can catch that okay you have to pay a thousand bucks per patient but if you catch that the, the treatment for early detection versus late detection is like you're talking like potentially millions like yeah. it's it doesn't make any sense but um, I got my first colonoscopy this year. Oh my God. So, uh, so I don't want to say, I don't want to say a terrible experience and scare people away from it because look, we're fucking being adults. We, if you're over 50, you need a colonoscopy, but it, but it sucks. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> the stu I found that the fasting was the hardest thing, a 24 hour totally. fast. And then, 
you know, they give you the medicine. drugs they give you once you show up are amazing. Oh, it's man. a great time. You're psyched at that I point because you're so I, miserable. You're like anything, anything. I, I got a colonoscopy <laughs> and an endoscopy at the same time. So they go down your throat at the same time. Oh. They go <laughs> up your butt. So... As I'm getting ready to go, they're going to put this thing in my mouth to hold my mouth open so I can put it down. And as they're about to put this thing that looks like a ball gag in my mouth and I'm like in a naked in a thing, I was like, hold on, hold on. Guys, do me a favor, please. Don't take pictures of me. I feel I feel so vulnerable. But once it was over, like I said, I was like, had tremendous peace of mind that, yeah. you know, they were like, you're good to go. And you kind of like find out right away exactly. too, if there's any polyps in there. Oh, and, man. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I, I have a very strong his, family history of colon cancer. And it I started getting them, I think, at 40. Yep. So I would also urge people, if, if there's any type of particular cancer in your family and you have not already alerted your doctor to it, like... There may be a product protocol where you can kind of get in earlier than Gen Pop. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So, I mean, even going back to the inside tracker blood, blood results, obviously, inside tracker is not looking for cancer biomarkers or anything like that. But, you know, you can get a general sense of other types of conditions, whether it's cardiovascular health, whether it's metabolic health, um, where you stand in terms of inflammation. Um, and all these things can play into things like your cognitive decline later on in life, etc. But like, it's a lot of things that are highly reversible, especially with lifestyle interventions.